Monica, great to see you again. Great to be here. Thank you for having me. Since our interview last year, I've uh, been following what Chargebacks 9-11 has been doing. It's been, you're just aggressively continuing with this fraud chargeback uh, software. Yes. Service. Mm -hmm. What interests me a great deal is why did you mention earlier to me today that your solutions uh, may one day, or a solution like that, become something like payroll services have become over the last uh, uh, two decades. I mean, 30 years ago, everybody did their payroll service. Now they use, a, everybody uses a payroll service, small Correct. and big companies. Worldwide. Worldwide. <laughs> So, you know, for us, you know, we've been in the chargeback business for quite some time. Uh, we have technology, software, but we've really what we've done is we've mastered all of the manual components to create efficiency. And really, it's just, it's progression. So I think the inevitable is when you have something this tedious that involves all of these different regulatory bodies. It interfaces with governments, compliance, schemes, multiple schemes, lots of different changes, lots of different rules, complexities, its own understanding. And it really represents a very small amount of revenue in relation to what's going on in the rest of the company. But it can be a significant liability if you mess it up and do it wrong. I just see there's a terrific, there's a lot of common denominators between how we have processed payroll. So if you think, you know, 30 years ago, then it was unheard of to hire or outsource your payroll. This was something that you just did in-house. So you had your accounting team and you had your payroll clerk. and. There were ledgers upon ledgers, and then you would read all of the rules, and then you would get nervous if you hired anybody from another state, if you were in the U.S. or another country, and you had your HR law, and then you had your government, and then you have all the taxation, and then you have all the regions, and I mean, it never ended until finally the industry evolved to a point where businesses decided, you know, actually this is not our core competency. Our business is selling widgets or our business is selling a service. We're really not in the finance industry. We, we are not payroll professionals. How much of our time are we spending and are we doing the best job? Chargebacks is the same. So you're dealing with, if you don't do it right, you're creating a huge amount of liability in terms of fraud, leakage, there's, there's constant changes. It's a lot of different regulatory bodies that you have to manage. And really, at the end of the day, you need and you rely on expertise. I don't know very many in-house teams. In fact, I don't know any company that processes chargebacks as well as they focus on their core competency. At the end of the day, uh, the merchant, the business, is hit with the loss related to a chargeback, but the consumer ultimately pays for it in the cost <laughs> of the service or the product. Yes. And if I'm, if I understand it correctly, chargeback is, of course, if it's a stolen credit card, or if a consumer purchased something that they didn't receive or was not what they expected, or fraudulent uh, dispute on the charge. Right. It, it, really, it really is a process that requires some financial auditing. So you shouldn't just be receiving chargebacks and you know, tallying the losses because you'll notice that those losses are going to continue to increase if you don't do anything about it. So in order to process chargebacks correctly, you need to dig in, understand the rules, understand what they mean, identify the source, really audit those records. It's a financial accounting utility and it, it can actually be used as a check and balance measure for your entire business because the chargeback is really a record of your mistakes. And if used correctly, this can be a tool that can give you insight to all the operational threats that you have. So it does make sense to have a very objective party doing this, a party that understands exactly how to read this type of data. 
and respond to it in an intelligent fashion to defend you, improve your reputation, and give you the most relative, third-party, neutral feedback so that you can prevent these types of actions from happening. You can prevent them? Yes. Well, you can prevent them if you have the right feedback. So let, let's say that you're getting chargebacks because, little do you know, I'll give you an example in the airline industry. So I was on hold last night to place, to change my ticket. You know, I held on the phone for 37 minutes. Now, unfortunately, I, I can't file a chargeback because it's just bad karma. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have filed a chargeback in two seconds. <laughs> but you know, I, I, I doubt that that airline has any idea that this would be, an in the, this, this is a trigger that is creating chargebacks. You know, they, they aren't getting this type of feedback. Now, statistically, there are probably about half of the chargebacks that a merchant receives is due to something that they're doing that are creating these, that's creating these liabilities. And merchants, we know, there's no business on the planet that is in business not to make any money. So, if you have an error and it's costing you money, the only thing that is, that is creating that continuum is that you don't know that it exists. With chargebacks and the right party, with our technology, we can identify, look, here's the problem, here's some feedback, now, fix this leakage, and that is a way that you can use strategically to prevent them. If I understand your example correctly, is that the customer interaction, customer service, because they're not happy about something, to handle that properly, to identifying where the problem is, mm -hmm. can prevent a lot of chargebacks. Yes, it can prevent, our statistics show when we first take on a client, part of our onboarding process is we go through all of the different uh, rules, systems, we, we kind of have like a check and balance, a, a whole survey of all the compliance he checks that we know that a merchant needs to follow. And we find just about 50% of all of their chargebacks can be prevented. Preventable. Yeah. The, and if they, if they do that and even cut that back 20, 30, 40, 50%, the post chargeback, your system helps identify those that are legitimate, those are fraudulent. Correct. Things like that, and how to just process it. Yes, and now you have to deal with, you know what? You shouldn't be getting wrongfully accused or assessed you know, fees. You should actually be disputing illegitimately filed chargebacks. If you don't dispute them, then you are admitting guilt to something that you probably didn't do anything wrong for and there's no reason why you should take the revenue hit. So this becomes just a very technical process. To dispute a chargeback is technical. You need to follow specific rules. The rules constantly change. There's lots of regulatory bodies. It's a lot of different data and manual processes. So you, bottom line, you have there's chargebacks that you can identify. You are creating yourselves. You can get feedback on those and prevent those from happening. Then there's a whole, the larger bucket of chargebacks, which are chargebacks that were, that may have been accidentally filed against you or illegitimately filed. For those, you should be defending yourself. Recover all the revenue. That, that's not necessary, that it's just a cost of doing business. It helps you through that process. Your service is available as an online service uh, and or uh, licensing your software? Yes, so we offer an unmanaged service where you can license our software or a fully managed service where we do everything from A to Z. Thank you so much, Monica. Thank you.